following program is rated G. It is suitable for all audiences. I am Kim Butardo, a student of the Mapua Institute of Technology in Tramuros Campus, currently taking up BS NSE or Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Sanitary Engineering, and this is part as a requirement on our subject ESE 154 or Advanced Topics and Problems in Environmental Engineering, handled by our respected professor, Engineer Victor V. Sabandeja. Risk Assessment and Risk Management of PCDD and PCDF in the Philippines At the end of this presentation, I would be able to discuss the following Overview of Persistent Organic Pollutants POP Sources Introduction to PCDD and PCDF PCDD and PCDF Inventory in the Philippines Risk Assessment of PCDD and PCDF Hazard Identification Exposure Assessment Toxicity Assessment and Risk Characterization Health Effects Kinetics of Dioxins and Furans in the Concept of Body Burden Risk Management of PCDD and PCDF And finally, Conclusion Overview of Persistent Organic Pollutants, or POPs According to the United Nations Environment Program, or UNEP, through the Stockholm Convention, Persistent Organic Pollutants, or POPs, are organic chemical substances that is, they are carbon-based. They possess a particular combination of physical and chemical properties such that, once released into the environment, they remain intact for exceptionally long periods of time, become widely distributed throughout the environment as a result of natural processes involving soil, water, and most notably air, accumulate in the fatty tissue in living organisms including humans and are found at higher concentrations at higher levels in the food chain, are toxic to both humans and wildlife. With the Stockholm Convention on POPs, they have identified the 12 chemicals or chemical groups for priority actions and also known as the Dirty Dozen. These are as follows. Aldrin, Chlordane, DDT, Dildrin, Endrin, Heptachlor, Hexachlorobenzene, Myrex, Toxaphene, polychlorinated biphenyls, polychlorinated dioxins, polychlorinated furans. POPs sources. In the Philippines, the POPs sources are as follow: POPs pesticides reformulations, POPs pesticides use and dioxins and furans releases from open burning in agricultural farms. Dioxins and furans from pulp and paper mills, fuel burning facilities, iron and steel industry, cement manufacturing industry, and waste processing facility. PCB from transformer servicing facilities. PCBs, dioxins and furans from electric utilities in hospitals. Introduction to PCDD and PCDF Polychlorinated dibenzo p-dioxins or PCDD are tricyclicomatic compounds formed by two benzene rings connected by two oxygen atoms, the hydrogen atoms of which may be replaced by up to eight chlorine atoms. Similarly, polychlorinated dibenzofurans or PCDF can be replaced by up to the same number of chlorine atoms 
but its structure consists of two benzene rings connected by one oxygen atom and one carbon-carbon bond. These compounds have never been produced intentionally for any reason other than laboratory purposes, but they occur as contaminants in many combustion and industrial chemical processes, especially in the presence of chlorine. PCDD and PCDF Inventory in the Philippines To aid parties to the Stockholm Convention on POPs, the United Nations Environment Program or UNEP has developed the standardized toolkit for identification and quantification of dioxin and furan releases, hereafter referred to as the UNEP toolkit. This toolkit prescribes a format and content for the conduct of inventories to compare results, identify priorities, mark progress, and follow changes over time at country, regional, and global levels. As part of the country's obligation, the Stockholm Convention, an inventory is to be conducted to assess the extent to which unintentional POPs releases have been reduced. The table shows the 1999 Philippine inventory of dioxins and furans using the emission factors of the UNEP toolkit in the absence of Philippine-specific emission factors. Uncontrolled combustion processes releases the highest level of dioxins and furans with 187.05 TEQ per annum or 35% of the total annual releases emitting 135.46 TEQ per annum to air medium. This is followed by power generation and cooking with 157.23 TEQ per annum. Releases to air has the highest contribution, the total 327.67 TEQ per annum with 35% attributed to uncontrolled combustion of agricultural residues, 30% from firewood cooking, and 18% from biomass-fired boilers subcategories. The Philippines' second national inventory of PCDD and PCDF in 2004 showed a lower total emissions of 457.73 TEQ per annum. However, a higher estimate of 143.55 TEQ per annum from 43.2 TEQ per annum was obtained in dump site and landfill leachate, excluding dump site and landfill fires, the second largest source of PCDD and PCDF emissions after open burning of agricultural residues. Last May 14, 2013, the training for the Philippines' third national inventory of PCDD and PCDF was conducted. The table shows the 2010 inventory of dioxins and furans using the emission factors of the UNEP toolkit. Risk Assessment of PCDD and PCDF Hazard Identification The hazard identification stage examines the data for contaminants detected at a site and consolidates the data to stress the chemicals of concern. According to the UNEP toolkit used in conducting inventories of dioxins and furans, it categorizes the sources of PCDD and PCDF into 10 groups namely waste incineration ferrous and non-ferrous metal production power generating and heating mineral products transport open burning processes production and use of chemicals and consumer goods miscellaneous disposal and landfill contaminated sites and hotspots also the UNIP toolkit enumerates the potential release routes of dioxins and furans and these are as follows. Air, water, land, product, residue. Exposure assessment. The second stage of a quantitative risk assessment consists of estimating the exposure to the chemicals by the populations potentially at risk. Exposure pathway includes the series of steps starting with the release of constituents and concluding with the interface with the human body. 
The figure shows the exposure pathway of dioxins and furans. An individual can be exposed to PCDD and PCDF through his diet. Since PCDD and PCDF are fat soluble, they bioaccumulate then climbing up the food chain. The figure shows the levels of dioxins and furans in the food supply. The table shows the estimated daily intake of PCDD and PCDF by food category, age, and gender. It shows estimated average daily TEQ intake in picograms per person for 5 age groups along with total daily TEQ intake proportional to body weight. Toxicity Assessment and Risk Characterization this stage of the risk assessment process defines the toxicity and risk present for the chemical concern. In addition to simply reporting a slope factor for carcinogenesis, EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency also provides codes which indicate the weight of evidence available for the chemical. These codes are called EPA cancer classifications and are included in the database. A. For human carcinogen B. For probable human carcinogen, there are two subclassifications. B1. For agents for which there is limited human data from epidemiologic studies. B2. For agents for which there is sufficient evidence from animal studies and for which there is inadequate or no evidence from human epidemiologic studies. C. For possible human carcinogen. D for not classifiable as to human carcinogenicity E. For evidence of non-carcinogenicity for humans Health Effects PCDD and PCDF are classified as Group B or the probable human carcinogen. In addition, people exposed to dioxins and furans have experienced changes in hormone levels. High doses of dioxins and furans have caused skin disease called thoracne. Kinetics of dioxins and furans and the concept of body burden. The fate of dioxins and furans in the body is unusual, primarily because most of the congeners are extremely fat soluble but are practically insoluble in water. Following ingestion and absorption from the small intestine, dioxins and furans are readily distributed via the blood to all organs, but they are preferentially retained in adipose fatty tissue. The release of stored dioxins and furans from adipose tissue into the circulation is extremely slow, limiting the rate of metabolism by the liver and subsequent excretion in the feces via the bile. Hence, the time to excrete half of an ingested dose of dioxins and furans or the half-life is usually measured in years. Risk Management of PCDD and PCDF With the Integrated POPs Management or the IPOPs Project of the Department of Environmental and Natural Resources in the Waste Management Sector, several issues on PCDD and PCDF exist in the Philippines. They include the continued emission of PCDD and PCDF from dump sites and landfill fires, the collection rate of household waste in all regions, except the National Capital Region, is still low, indicating that it is burned in the open, where cost, convenience, or local custom, and social acceptability make that option attractive. No efficient mechanical sorting systems for mixed waste, source separation, and collection of recyclable goods. The latter pose a significant risk in terms of the production of leachate. With limited technical infrastructure for dioxins and furans monitoring in the Philippines, the conduct of related activities are done only on limited basis. Other national government agencies and the academe perform research and monitoring on POPs depending on existing foreign-funded monitoring activities. Some government agencies that have the capacity 
and mandate to conduct research and development work related to POPs are as follows. Research and Development Division of the Environmental and Management Bureau of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Ecosystems Research and Development Bureau of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Industrial Technology Development Institute of the Department of Science and Technology. Bureau of Food and Drug Administration of the Department of Health. Bureau of Plant Industry of the Department of Agriculture. Occupational Health and Safety Center of the Department of Labor and Employment. In terms of the risk management of dioxins and furan sources, the action plan for the unintentional POPs are as follows. Develop and implement BAT or Best Available Technology and BEP or Best Environmental Practice Promotion, Adaption and Monitoring Programs within three years across the most significant dioxin and furan source categories based on updated inventory. Formulate by the end of year 3 from the approval of NIP or National Implementation Plan and continuously enforce thereafter appropriate policies and regulations to control dioxins and furans releases. Develop and implement a program for information on the prevention of environmental and health effects of dioxins and furans by the end of year 2. In terms of the risk and management of dioxins and furans exposures, the following general guidelines are recommended for reducing potential PCDD and PCDF exposures via food. Consume a balanced diet low in fats of animal origin. Trim fat from food. Cook food in ways that reduce animal fat content. Conclusion With the previous discussions presented, the following conclusions are established. Low level of dioxins and furans are found throughout the environment as byproduct of combustion and industrial processes. Emissions of the dioxins and furans have been reduced through the years basing upon the three national PCDD and PCDF inventory in the Philippines last 1999, 2004, and 2010. Their corresponding dioxins and furans releases from different sources are 534.0611. TEQ per annum, 457.73 TEQ per annum, and 282.363 TEQ per annum, respectively. In terms of PCDD and PCDF sources, dioxins and furans can be reduced through developing and implementing BAT and BEP, formulating policies and regulation to control releases, developing and implementing programs on the prevention of its environmental and health effects. In general, exposure to dioxins and furans through food can be reduced with a low-fat diet, trimming fat from meats, choosing low-fat dairy products and fish products. Given both the uncertainty about the long-term health effects of various levels of exposure to dioxins and furans and the progress apparently made so far here in the Philippines, it seems reasonable to continue periodic surveillance of population's exposures to dioxins and furans through the food supply. However, government regulations and enforcement of standards for dioxins and furans levels in food not to be in effect here in the country. And that is all about the risk assessment and risk management of PCDD and PCDF in the Philippines. Thank you for watching.